it is possible in as much as we say offenses are a, a frequent occurrence of life but it is also possible to be a person who goes around picking unnecessary offense Lakama here. Welcome once again to the Life in Abundance broadcast. The broadcast is just designed to inspire you, to encourage you, and to equip you with tips, tools, and teachings so that you may live life in abundance. If you haven't as yet subscribed to the channel, please do me a favor by subscribing to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you don't miss the upcoming broadcast. You can go a step further of even sharing the broadcast with your loved ones so that they also get blessed by the content on this channel. We are learning about offenses. We are in a series of broadcasts entitled Overcoming Offenses. Shall we pray before we read the scriptures? Shall we pray as we get into the broadcast? Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you. We bless your name for yet another opportunity to come around your word, to be taught, to be instructed, to be healed by your word. We pray that by your Holy Spirit, heal our hearts, instruct us in the ways we should walk, and take all the glory for all that you'll do today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Once again, welcome. Let's begin by reading our two scriptures uh, the foundational scriptures for this discussion, Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. It reads, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe unto the man by whom the offense cometh. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe unto the man by whom the offense cometh. Let's read again from the book of Luke, chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, verse number 1 of Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Scripture reads, Then said he to the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Jesus is taking his time to teach about offenses. Now, we have just taken one scripture verse from both passages. But they are all passages that are talking about offenses. He teaches and explains that the one who is offended, the offender, will be greatly punished. But our focus is to the one who has been offended. That's what we are looking at here. The one who has been offended. Number one, you must know that offenses are common. They will always come. And number two, as offenses come, you need to first and foremost calm down before you do anything, before you decide, before you make a decision, before you react, calm down. And now let's look today at groups of people in offense. You see, when we talk about offenses, we have to realize that we are not all offended at the same level. There are categories. There are different groups of people. When we all gather as offended people, we can easily be grouped in two or even three groups. Let's look at those groups. Now, understanding these categories and these groups helps us also in dealing with the offense that has come our way. Right. The first group of people in the group of the offended, that's what we are talking about, the group of the offended. The first group is those who have been genuinely offended. A genuine offense. Within this group, 
I will split the group again into two. Remember, it's the group of the genuinely offended. But there are two groups within that, uh, the, the, that, that group. The first one is those who have been offended by mistake or by ignorance. You see, some, sometimes people do things and it's a genuine mistake or they completely don't know and it ends up offending you. It is very important to understand this background. So that you don't hold somebody by the throat on something that they done by sheer or mere ignorance and by mistake. You see, the judgment given when you have committed, when it is an error or a mistake, a genuine one by ignorance or a pure mistake by nature, is different when something has been done intentionally. We have to realize when you are holding an offense, when you are dealing with an offense, understand this, this background. Is it out of a mistake? What is the person saying? What are they saying? Are they, are they coming to apologize that they have done a mistake or they are surely uh, unaware? They are ignorant of what they were doing. Very important. This is group number one. Those who have been offended by mistake or by ignorance. And there is a group number two. Remember these two categories, they all fall under the, the main group of those genuinely offended. They are those who are genuinely offended, but it was a mistake. And they are those who are genuinely offended by people who intentionally wanted to offend them. Oh yes, there are people in this life. There are people in this life who intentionally want to cause harm who intentionally want to, to offend others, they are there, such people. Now, when you are aware, in many a time, such people would have registered their position with you that they, they, are going to, uh, they are going to be against you. They are going to be working against you. The, these are the people who, who openly uh, show you that they are against you. They, they are your enemies. They don't like you. They don't like what you do. And they offend you genuinely and intentionally. Now you see, already these two groups, by understanding that, oh yes, that was a mistake. They, they didn't know. The way you handle it is going to be different with the one whom you know. Uh, that one is always after my case. That one is always looking for me. Understanding these two premises will help you how you are going to handle each one of them. Yes, it's a genuine offense. You have been offended genuinely. But the first one was a mistake. And they are coming to apologize. They didn't know that what they are doing was going to hurt you, was going to make you angry. How do you respond to that one? And the second one, it's a genuine offense. They, they, they are after you. And you know that they have committed their days to be an offense, to be a pain in your flesh. How do you deal with that case? Are you going to handle them the same? No. There is need for wisdom. There is need for discretion. Remember the scripture in Proverbs. Yes, Proverbs says, A man by discretion deferred anger. Assess the situation. This is the reason why it is important. When you are offended, before you begin to run helter-skelter, before you begin to respond and react and throwing tantrums, calm down. Assess the situation. Understand where, where the other person is coming from. Is it intentional? Is it a mistake? Is it out of ignorance? Is there something they must be educated? Is there something they must be taught? Is there an area they are not uh, aware of? Then you take the platform to teach, to, to, to show uh, how things ought to be done. And differently, if it is an intentional attack, an intended offense or definitely such a person they know what they are doing it's not a teaching they want it's it, it's something else we'll talk about that later in another broadcast how do you deal with such people understand group number one genuinely offended but within the genuinely offended there are those who are offended by mistake and those offended by intention on purpose now there is group number two I like this group because many a times 
a lot of people fall into group number two. The group number two is what we call the supposed offended. Oh yes, these are the, 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 the people who assume that they have been offended. They presume. They are offense pickers. It is possible, in as much as we say offenses are a, a frequent occurrence of life, but it is also possible to be a person who goes around picking unnecessary offense, looking for things to offend you in every situation and in every setting. Oh yes, in my, in my work as a pastor, I have come across people who are literally offended by anything that is done in their presence. They always have something to complain about. They have something to raise that this was not done right. This, was, this one is attacking me in every setting. You, you have heard of the terms, uh, the drama queens. They are also drama kings. The people who are always picking offense, always looking for drama everywhere. We call them professional victims. Every, every situation, they, they, they try and look for something to raise, a, an issue in everything. Supposed offense. Now, when you get offended, first and foremost, you need to check yourself. Check yourself. Am I just assuming an, an offense here? Am I just picking an offense? Am I not just being touchy? Am I not just overreacting in everything? Is it, a, is it a genuine offense or it is a supposed, a presumed, a, 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 a putated offense? It is possible to because or, or probably because of just desiring or wanting attention, you, you just start fires everywhere, offense everywhere, picking offense everywhere. There is a group that is genuinely offended, but there is also a group that is supposedly offended, that, uh, that takes assumed offense. They find offense in everything, in everything. Now you need to check yourself. If, if every second day or every day you have an offense, every day, in as much as they are inevitable in our lives, but why is it that it's only you in your group who is always offended? You need to check that. Are you not just picking unnecessary offense? Are, are you not just uh, uh, going around being touchy? Are you not just overreacting on other things? You need to check yourself. Yes, in the book of Luke chapter 17, Jesus, when, if you read it going further with the whole passage, Jesus actually commands the, commands the disciples in dealing with offense. He says, take heed of yourself. First and foremost, attend to yourself. Before you look out to the offender, take heed of yourself. Am I, is this a genuine offense? Is this genuine or I'm overreacting? Is it just me? Do an introspection. When you have finished of taking heed of yourself, then step number two, all right, they have genuinely offended me. Is it a mistake or it is intentional? Understanding these groups, understanding where you stand in the class of the offended will help you to heal better and to deal with the offense much better. Which group are you? Are you genuinely offended? And if you are genuinely, genuinely offended, was it a mistake or it's an intentional uh, offense? Are you group number two, the supposed offense, offended? Uh, are you one of those who just picked an offense that is not even there, where everybody else is surprised? How come you get offended in this? We, we, everybody else is not seeing the offense except you. Are you in that category, picking offense, touchy, touchy person? Where, where do you stand? Jesus says, take heed of yourself. Look at yourself. Understand where you stand in dealing with these offenses. And the, the, the desire, the focus is, whatever group you see yourself, read offenses. Take them off your life. Remove offense from your life because they will never do you any good. Yes, regardless of which group you find yourself, whether it's the supposed 
whether is the genuinely offended by mistake or genuinely offended by intention or on purpose, regardless of which group, deal away, remove offense from your life because they have never done anyone any good. Offenses are not a blessing. They will never improve your life in any way. They have disrupted many relationships. They have sown discord among communities and they have hindered many from spiritual growth. Oh yes, when you entertain offenses, your spiritual growth is hindered. You can't grow. You can't grow because offenses are like thorns. They, they, they are disturbing your, your nourishment and your growth. The same people who are supposed to provide nourishment for your spirit to, to grow, they are the same people who are being used as the, the pathways for your offense. And thereby, it hinders your spiritual growth. The question today is, which group are you? And what are you doing with the offense that you find yourself in? The encouragement is read it from you. Remove offense from your heart. Remove it because it is a root that causes bitterness, that causes strife, that sows discord among the people. God bless you so much. Let's meet again in the next broadcast as we continue studying and learning about offenses. Being armed with this knowledge is already a tool of dealing with the offense. But as we come in the next broadcast, we are now looking at dealing with them. How do I address? Once I have known which group I am, how do I deal with the offense? Don't miss the next broadcast. God bless you so much. And let's meet again in the next broadcast.